everyone and welcome back to Blatantly Bookish. Today I'm here with my belated July reading wrap up. So July was a decent reading month, I suppose. I finished five works and there's surprising diversity in form this month. Though it was book two-a-thon so I suppose I should have read a bit more than I did. I participated in Booktubeathon more in spirit than in actuality this month since I only finished one graphic novel and the prose poetry collection that week. But without further ado, and in no particular order, on to the books. I think the first book I finished in the month of July was Perfume by Patrick Suskind. I did this as a buddy read with the lovely Jasmine from Novel Thoughts. Perfume is a dark and twisted saga of Jean-Baptiste Granoui. At least that's how I've been pronouncing his name in my head. It is probably wrong. If you take French, I'm sure you can figure it out. Jean-Baptiste was born without a scent of his own, but with an acute sense of smell for the world around him. He's able to pick apart the sense of Paris in the 1800, and most of all, he yearns to find a scent of his own. The book deals with Jean-Baptiste's struggle to find his own identity, his own scent, and ultimately discover what it means to be human. But of course, the title of the book does say Perfume, the Story of a Murderer, and murder is definitely an aspect of this book, as the people who Jean-Baptiste interacts with do have a terrible habit of dying. Jean-Baptiste is such a psychologically complex character, and I spent the entirety of the book fascinated and puzzled by his motivations and personality. I quite enjoyed this twisted little tale, and I highly recommend it for those who enjoyed Frankenstein or Jekyll and Hyde. I feel that it actually fits in quite well with those types of gothic books, stylistically and thematically. This month I also finished The Miserable Mill by Lemony Snicket on audiobook. It's part of a series of unfortunate events and was a book that I wanted to reread as part of my adaptation series. I think the next one I'll make is about a Netflix, a series of unfortunate events, and this book is the last one that is featured in season one. It upheld all the qualities that I love in a series of unfortunate events, sarcastic and morose tone, clever kids who are not taken seriously by adult figures, etc, etc. But this time around in the series, this is where I remember feeling like the book started to become repetitive and formulaic. And I'm beginning to feel that way again. So I'm definitely going to discuss this more in my adaptation video coming soon, hopefully sometime in August. So if you're interested in the series or book to TV adaptations in general, you should check that out. And in case you missed it, I recently released the first video in that series besides the introduction, which is about Anne with an E and Anne of Green Gables. So check that out if you haven't already. I also read the first two Sandman graphic novels this month by Neil Gaiman called This One Is Preludes and Nocturnes, and the second one, which I also read, The Doll's House. I don't have a physical copy, but I have it on ebook. So this series, so far at least, is about a family of immortals that are responsible for abstract concepts in human lives. So far, most of the plot has surrounded dream and death, but desire has been mentioned as well. These immortal characters play major roles, but the majority of the issues actually center around human characters and their interactions with dream and death. It focuses on themes of humanity, immortality, and storytelling. I really like the second volume infinitely more than the first volume. The first volume's main storyline was about a man who tried to capture death to achieve immortality, but mistakenly he captures a dream. Dreams of entrapment wreaks havoc on humanity, causing all sorts of sleep disturbances and sleeping sicknesses. I probably wouldn't have decided to continue on with the series, though, if it weren't for the last issue of Volume 1, which focuses on Death and Dream, who are really such intriguing characters. I thought that the second volume's main premise was done better than the first volumes since we were already familiar with the concept of the dream realm and had been properly introduced to death and dream. But my favorite part of volume two was actually a side story about the decision to grant immortality to a human. Once every century that particular human and dream would meet in a tavern to discuss life. 
and it followed this premise through four or five centuries up to the present day. So, so far I am really enjoying the series and I would highly recommend it to others, but obviously I have not finished the series and cannot speak to it as a whole. I also finished Homegoing by Ya Jiasi this month, which was a buddy read with Mary from Happily Ever Esh and Justina. I imagine you've probably heard of this novel as it is one of the more hyped books on booktube at the moment. If for some reason you haven't heard a little synopsis of it, it follows the future generations of two sisters in Africa, one of whom ends up in America, so her lineage deals with slavery, sharecropping, and basically African American history, and the other sister stays in Africa, so her lineage focuses more on colonialism. This book was so ambitious in form. For the most part, it worked well for me. I know these thoughts on homegoing aren't particularly unique, but I'd like to discuss some of my more nuanced thoughts in a separate video because I feel like any book that I keep recommending to others and find a way to work into everyday conversation really truly deserves a video of its own. And last but not least, I finished Bluettes by Maggie Nelson this month as part of Book Tubathon. This is a collection of prose poetry that discusses the color blue, but it does so in a stream of consciousness type way and discusses her love for blue as a color and mood and makes all sorts of connections with love and loneliness. She also touches on all sorts of topics that loosely relate to blue in a philosophical way. It's a very bittersweet type of book and it was the perfect thing to eat, to eat, to read while eating a big bowl of blueberries, which just happened to be one of my favorite foods. I'm just going to read you um, one of my favorite lines and then one of my favorite little vignettes because it's written in these, you know, prose poetry vignette type things. They're all numbered. Um, so yes, one comes from number 72. Loneliness is solitude with a problem. Can blue solve the problem or can it at least keep me company within it? And then the other one that I want to share with you guys is number 144. It talks about blue and depression and fire. Then again, perhaps it does feel like a fire. The blue core of it, not the theatrical orange crackling. I have spent a lot of time staring at this core in my own dark chamber, and I can testify that it provides an excellent example of how blue gives way to darkness, and then how, without warning, the darkness grows up into a cone of light. So as you may have been able to tell from my July wrap-up, the Booktubeathon was not a rousing success for me in terms of the amount I read, but in terms of what I read, one of the Sandman graphic novels and Bluettes, it was pretty rewarding. I hope you guys all had a wonderful month of July and a wonderful Booktubeathon as well. Please let me know down below how your reading month was, what you think of any of these books, if you read them, if you want to read them, and until next time, I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye!